Hi, I'm Amy. I'm Delia. And I'm Wendell. And welcome to Yes, But Why Podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Mom Spaghetti. Mom Spaghetti. Mom Spaghetti. <laughs> that reminded me also, I took a BuzzFeed quiz today. And and, and, you're, and the song lyric you're most likely to be is Mom Spaghetti. No, the food that I'm most likely to be is spaghetti. Okay. The food? What does that say about you? Like that you're carefree, well, that you mix well with sauce? It says that I'm, I'm a classic, <laughs> but messy, per- and something about the be- meatballs. Oh, okay. Oh, something about? Like a dick joke? They just like no, doing... I don't think so. I don't think it was a dick joke. I hope not. I... Also, we're fun, so meatballs. Yeah, maybe. Uh, so, you're a classic, but you're going to get a little messy from time to time. Right. Because you have, you're have somewhere on the emotional disturbed spectrum. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. And sometimes people use a fork. And a spoon. So, Some people yeah, use so a fork a and a spoon. Yeah. And a spoon. And a spoon. Yeah. I, the last time I was in a fine Italian restaurant, I was given both a fork and a spoon with my... A fettuccine. Was it like a broader spoon? Yeah, it was a it was a pasta spoon for sure. Hey, oh, hey, there we go. Great. I got juice in my cans. Great. Using the studio cans pipes. are all juiced up. He was like, I don't know I what to tell you. I can't look at anything, <laughs> and I was like, well, let me just start plugging. It hasn't shit been in. since <laughs> I was in Austin, Texas, recording studio that I had juice in these cans. You know, so you go out to Los Angeles, Hollywood, California. They just give you oh, yeah, some, there we go. they give you buds, not cans, and they got juice in my buds. They don't, they don't, they don't have the cans anymore. They put it, they minimized to the buds. They, I, I've actually. Did you call them cans? I do, uh, when I was recording a podcast, we can start from here where I talk about my failed podcast. Uh, Great. When I recorded my six episodes of a podcast once, <laughs> I, uh. I used cans because I wanted to give people that like very serious studio vibe when they were in my apartment recording a podcast with me and Roxy, uh, and I think people were pretty impressed. <laughs> I mean, this is way more impressive. This is a real studio. I I would just had a bunch of microphones plugged into a MacBook. Um, That's I would say what most people have. Yeah. I mean, my I had like my husband has a bit of an overkill when it comes to all yeah. the shit. No, yeah, this place definitely makes me anxious, for sure. <laughs> yeah, um, this is... I also have one of these in my house. I have, like, wet container store dreams about places like this. <laughs> what does that mean? And that means that I dream about putting things in containers and then I ejaculate. Um, really? Well, Do, not in the dream. It, I don't ejaculate no, the, in the dream. No, there's no sexual stimulation whatsoever in the dream. It's just the idea of organizing a bunch of stuff that then makes me wake up with sticky trousers. Okay, so are containers... Is the container store you're, like... If, like, you're ready to get get it on with the lady, is that, like, where you bring her? I've actually never been inside of a contain- container store. Because you're afraid you'll been, just ejaculate in your pants? I've never been contained within a container store. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know that I would ever bring a lady to a container store. Um, I guess not before you've had sex with her. No, I'm sure if a woman walks into my apartment, then she probably knows some things about, like, who I am as a person. <laughs> like, she's gonna see... God, I'd love to see the inside of your house. She's going to see, like, the rolled up guest towels on top of the toilet and be like, oh, you live in a hotel. Like, you have problems. She's, she's like, that conclusion's already drawn. And then she's going to know, like, when we do walk into a container store together, she's going to be like, well, we're not having sex tonight because he's done. <laughs> he's finished already. <laughs> Just walk Guess in like, mm. all right, thank you. Right? I'm really excited about that. Yeah. So you live in a hotel? Well, I just, I, I like that aesthetic. It is, well, I mean, it's a studio, <laughs> it's basically a hotel room. You walk in, you have a little kitchen, then you have, like, the living space, which is just basically my bed and a sofa and some various other accoutrements. Um, and then you have the bathroom, and I keep the bathroom very clean, very orderly. Like, if someone were to walk in there, they'd be like, oh, I feel welcome in this bathroom. Like, normally you walk into somebody else's bathroom and you're like, uh, I'm being assaulted <laughs> with your presence. <laughs> So you don't like a bathroom that has indications of people living in it? No, oh. not at all. No, I want, yeah, <laughs> just like a, just a very sterile I, environment. I put on I put on nitrile gloves and hand wash my toilet with rubbing alcohol every time it's ever used. That's a lie. No, that is a lie. <laughs> I was like, also, if you really wanted to do that, just get a spray bottle; it'll dry. 
Yeah, that's true. Now I wouldn't have to put my hands in there. Although maybe part of that is like I need to be the I need to deal with my own filth in a very direct way. You know, this is all very hot. Wait, other people's filth as well. You need to do, deal with in a direct way. Well, that's why I wear the gloves. Because if it were just mine, I would. Oh yeah, you just right? get right that's in obviously there. my own stuff. But yeah, yeah. if it's somebody else's, I definitely want to put on the gloves so I don't have to like have a part of them with me forever. <laughs> that's that's definitely something Howie Mandel would say. No, Howie Mandel. Howie Mandel is he is uh, absolutely he is OCD. He did it. He, I remember I heard a thing when he was on a radio interview where he uh, he would have to because when he when he left his apartment he wouldn't know whether or not he locked his door. He constantly he couldn't get it out of his head. So what he would have to do is he, he would lock his door and then take his key and scrape visibly scrape his wrist. So if he ever thought did I lock the door he could look at his wrist. So many. Other. Don't don't scrapes last longer than a day, or a couple hours? I mean, sometimes I lock my door in my house five or six times in a day. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Markers were a thing. Uh, That's a good point. I mean, <laughs> my uh, one thing I do because I'm constantly afraid that I that my fly is open. So when I really? zip, when I zip my fly up in the restroom, I hold it at the top and count to three. Huh. So I can so I have like this this memory cue of like so if I'm thinking oh god is my fly open right now. I just I'm like, oh yeah, I counted to three. It's good. Like I give myself a little a little cue there. Sure, sure. Yeah. I feel like your pants are so nice. Why would the fly not work? Well, no. I mean, I just I no. I just want to make sure I didn't forget. Oh right, because yeah. you have to actively do it. I see. What I'm not assuming around. that. No, I mean, of course. I mean, these are these are probably two to three hundred dollars zippers alone. In, on the indeed, pants. indeed. I mean, the fabric is another. We're I mean, talking five hundred dollars basically for a pair of trousers, <laughs> and a lot of that is getting get sunk. out of here. <laughs> A lot of that is getting sunk into zipper costs. So <laughs> zipper costs. I'm always just wearing jogging pants that are like painted to look like uh, regular like pants. Denim. Yeah, yeah. Jiggins. I just like hand paint, <laughs> like loops and These belts are and buttons and stuff. The finest like denim sweating pants. <laughs> it's just like three pairs that I just keep <laughs> repainting whenever I need it to be. It's like death becomes her, where they're just like spray painting their skin on their face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Swimming trunks, I'll draw my own legs on it. You could wear a lot of skirts. Or if I'm ever in fear of... You're all looking at me. Um, if I'm ever in fear... <laughs> yes, you're <okay>. speaking. <laughs> uh, if I'm ever thinking that my fly is down whenever I decide to wear pants, I think I always make a bigger deal of it. Um, yeah. Like, whenever I walk out on stage, it's normally like, bleh! And then I'll just check my fly, and then just... I I have, I have like, uh, I've done a no-look fly zip on several occasions. Uh, the most recent of which is years ago. This is where, this is where I'm like, is my fly open? And I do, like, a quick, subtle motion with my hand without looking at my crotch to see, like, oh, what's going on down there? And usually, the fly, if the fly is closed and it's so subtle, like you wouldn't even notice. It's the it's the it's the most skillful misdirection. Well, because guys are always just touching their junk. Yeah, I mean, I can I can I could brush it off as like, oh, there was a spot of marzipan on my <laughs> on my trousers. Um, oh my god! But uh, <laughs> the. Uh, <laughs> Were you, like, looking everywhere but down there? Oh, yeah, no, I'm, like, I'm looking up in the sky as though I have a conversation with God, and then I just slowly, no. I just very quickly reach down with the back of my fingers, like, gr like uh, just gracefully brush my, my groin, and then I'm like, no, everything's fine. See, I'm, like, the kind of person who has, like, 45 minutes worth of a heart-to-heart -heart with a person, and then when they leave... I, like, kind of just, you know, will put my hands in my lap and then realize that my pants are just open for that entire time. But I don't think most people are looking down in, in the vag area, so I don't worry about it. I think for a lady, I think for lady uh, trousers, lady slacks, <laughs> you, uh, you know, they tend to be a, they're, they're a, they're a thinner cut, so you're not going to see as much divergence, you know, you're not, and then... I don't Is know. Fitter cut? Oh, uh, meaning like they're a tighter pant? They're a tighter pant. Oh, sure. I guess. Uh, the ones that I have where the fly is almost always down are these pants that are a little a little baggy. Oh, okay. And so they're kind of flouncy. So that's why I'm like, eh, nobody noticed. Flouncy is a good word. Right? <laughs> flouncy, flouncy is an inspirational Disney character. <laughs> this summer, Flouncy. <laughs> flouncy doesn't know when to stop showing her groin to people, but she's going to learn in the big city. Yeah. It's about just accepting yourself, whether mm -hmm. or not you and your fly are down. It's a party. I, <laughs> I'm, t 
taking I'm taking a Meisner class <laughs> right now, and I feel like at some point that's gonna be a, <laughs> that's gonna be part of an, a repetition <laughs> exercise. Someone's gonna be like, "Your fly is open. My fly is open. Your fly is open. My fly is open. Your fly is open. My fly is open." I'm looking at your dick. You're looking at my dick. You're looking at your dick. You're looking at my dick. <laughs> like, it's is that and how that goes. That's how. Yeah, I mean, a Meisner exercise is uh, or the repetition exercise is you just. Look at somebody, you make an observation about their behavior, and then they, they can confirm or deny that. You just repeat over and over until something makes you change, and then you keep doing it. It gets very confrontational. I think it cuts to, I think at times it can get a little actory, but, uh, <laughs> the, you know, the instructor's there to kind of say, like, guys, stop acting, do a real thing, like, make an observation. I think it helps you work on emotional language, like, what are you really seeing on somebody? Are they relaxed, or are they nervous, or are they pensive or are they sad like you know these are all things that might have more subtle appearances to them mm. and then also you're just being real i did i taught a class today so i'm ready to talk about improv guys <laughs> i'm ready to talk about improv yes but why um and uh, <laughs> he gets it he gets I, it um, oh yeah well, hold on ladies and gentlemen nathan Ehrman. <laughs> oh, <thank you. laughs> it's okay it's not like yeah ladies it's not and gentlemen like anybody's internet, like... someone who you shouldn't care about <laughs> on any level <laughs> um I don't know, well, thank you for listening. This far. Someone whose only <laughs> contribution to this earth is probably holding you down in some way. Uh, a tall, oh God, blue-eyed, I... blonde-haired white man <laughs> who, just by his very presence, is oppressing somebody. Um, I'm so sorry that people make you feel that way, because I bet you they do. No, I mean, no one in person <laughs> makes me feel that way. Sure. That's how it was with just pilot's the license, like, the entire time. We were all just, like, huddled in the corner. And letting Nathan do improv while we practice. We we're yeah. all so intimidated by him. Um, <laughs> uh, you were I was, talking about Yeah, class. I was teaching, and so <laughs> I, I do this thing where, like, with I was just doing, like, a, a three-line scene exercise where someone would come in, and I would just, I want people to say, I am and I want. I want people to make bold statements about who they are. Yeah. Um, someone would say, I am and I want, and I was like, okay, the second line, I'm going to give you some structure, okay? So you're going to say, I am and I want. Second line, I just want you to make an honest observation about this person based on their what they just said their body like their language whatever like just say anything trust each other um and then the third line is a grab bag say whatever you want uh and i had so many people on the second line be like you seem sad <laughs> you appear as though at some point <laughs> someone made you upset today and i was like what is this i got i got, I got like frustrated because i was like that's i call i call stuff that happens outside of the theater street level i say that's street level <laughs> um because we because for those of you uh for our austrian listeners uh we are i i teach and the three of these lo lovely hosts uh improvise and also teach and do various other things at the new movement theater in austin texas which is in a basement uh which is a dungeon-like space very um, unusual in Texas. Yeah. It's really expansive it now. Strange. It's a really big dungeon. It is. It's very circuitous. I, I'm i sure someone will be contained there at some point. Contained? Um, I have to stop and take a nap, like, halfway through, yeah. trying to walk through it. <laughs> well, the end is the nap. Like, it's when you there get is, the yeah, room the back, with the cow, The yeah. back, back green room is the napping space. Yeah. You can, you can nap. You I definitely wanna, nap. I want to leave pillows and a blanket there, just for the hominess, because sometimes you're exhausted and you just want to sleep. So you're using Meisner techniques in your acting uh, of, of level two, or like teaching of level two. I'm teaching, yeah. I, I, like, I like the idea. I mean, I know that, so in improv, I get that you should be, I think that two people come into a scene and they immediately start making some establishing statements about who they are. Like, that's the most important thing because you have to have, that being said, you want to leave room for like people endowing each other with stuff. But another thing I like is the idea that someone can just look at you. I, I, I don't like the idea... Well, when people are being too acty, too performy, you know, someone comes in and is like, Oh, what am I supposed to... My dick is too big. Oh, you know? And I just like... Classic. Oh, yeah, classic improv scene. That's probably an improv troupe name out there. <laughs> Fucking Gary, Indiana. My dick is too big. Um, so... <laughs> you oh, 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 my dick is too big. Uh, my the... dick is too big when the lights come up. <laughs> uh, 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 no, it's no suggestion we... of something that's too big. Oh, my dick. Oh, thanks. The thanks, lady Mom. was practicing on Sunday, which none of us particularly enjoy that name right now. So by the time you all hear this, you'll we'll probably, we'll probably be called something else. The lady is is a, a herald troop at the New Movement, and uh, I don't know why it's called TV. lady. It used to be all. It used to be all ladies. I believe that.